a course on Safari about refactoring in Python and one of the use cases he's about to go through is refactoring code dealing with the Roman numerals kata he's taken like a test driven development approach I think and I think he's just going to try to build up the, the solution by kind of laying out the requirements in a simplistic way which is probably good but I remember trying to do this problem a long time ago and I couldn't quite figure it out I came up with some ridiculous long-winded solution that had lots of cases and helper functions so I tried to resolve it again and I was actually surprised by how straightforward it was this is going to be a recursive solution and the one thing I do want to note that is we're using Python 3.6 I'm not sure when it occurred but in a very recent version of Python dictionary retains its order and I think if, if you listen to one of the Raymond Hedinger uh, Python conference talks he also highlighted how it takes up 30% less memory so they made some major improvements to it I don't really know how but in any event uh, just to prove that to you if you print out the, um, the keys and the values and numerals that items they should all be in order so nothing should be out of order there yeah so 1, 5, 10 in, in other versions of Python this solution will not work unless you have a, an order dictionary which you could use from collections but uh, this is the nice thing about the newer Python a lot of times the ordering of the keys has a lot of meaning uh, so yeah so basically what we're gonna try to do is create a function that says okay if I have you know 15 right you have to return x5 or if I have 16 you'll return x5i so we need to write a function to do that so we're gonna convert Roman it's gonna take an input number and it's gonna return something and the thing I did the first thing you could do is it's kind of easy right you just say let's go through uh, for the you know for the uh, yeah I'll do for symbol and integer in numerals dot items and you know sometimes over time I've become more thoughtful in trying to use actual names rather than just the KV for key value just that'll help you like symbol integer and Roman and numerals dot items the first case we're gonna have to deal with is easy if the input number is like 50 or 10 or 5 we're just gonna wanna return the uh, the corresponding symbol so how are we gonna do that just a simple if statement so if integer is equal to the input number I'm just gonna keep it on one line we're gonna return the symbol and so that's fine maybe we want to do some incremental testing here so I'll say print uh, convert Roman with a 10 hopefully that'll yield an X there we go so at least that that works now probably that's not that's not gonna meet all your test cases so the other thing we have to do now is it, this is where the recursion starts to come in well we're looking we're going over all these elements in the dictionary let's talk about a use case for a number like 17 so we know 17 is gonna it's gonna be greater than 10 and less than 50 right and then after we find the value that first meets the criteria for the first part of the Roman numeral like X we're gonna have something left over we're gonna have the remainder and then you could almost say oh for that remainder let's repeat the same logic so here it is it, it it's kinda straightforward when you think about it but maybe it's not that obvious so basically if your number the input number so if the input number is greater than the integer then we're gonna have to do something we're gonna have to keep track of that value so what I did is I just set up a range flag and originally set it equal to none but if we find that the input number is greater than the integer that we find as we traverse over the uh, the dictionary keys and values we're gonna set the range flag equal to the uh, equal to eh, did I do the symbol let's test it out and let's just go down here and return 
range flag just to make sure it's working because I forget what I set it to now. I'm just kind of hacking my way through it. So if I do 17, this should return X. Right, let me get rid of this just because it's a simple case. So what that basically did was it said, well, input numbers greater than one, check that. Input numbers greater than five, check that. Input numbers greater than 10, check that. What do you mean check that? I just mean that I'm setting range flag equal to the symbol. And input number greater than 50, no. That's not true, so I'm not resetting the variable. The variable range flag gets set to the symbol, it maxes out at at that you know 10 or x whatever you want to call it so at this point we have to start thinking about how to deal with the recursion and what do we need to do we need to say okay well I've got my my stuff set up here so what do I have remaining so remaining is the input number minus something and the minus something is going to be what's in that dictionary at the symbol which is going to be the range flag because we were setting the range flag equal to the symbol so let's just see if this works why is it mad at me unused variable oh let's just return it I like that they're giving me IDE prompts in a, in a throwaway code editor um, so what should be remaining here with just one pass on 17 it's going to be 10 minus 7, so it should be 7. Okay, so that works. Now, here's the weird part. You're basically going to take, um, so the range flag now is the, like the X or the V, and the remaining is going to be the difference between that and the input number uh, as you kind of call into what you found, numerals at range flag. So this is the, the tricky part, maybe not tricky, but it took me a couple of times to get it right. So you just return the range flag, which is like the X or the C or the D, and you simply convert Roman on the remaining. And so 17 should give us X V two. So let's check that, make sure it works. And there you have it. So the tricky part, so the easy thing is this, right? If, if you get the input number and it's actually matching up to one of the, the values or the integers in the dictionary as we iterate over the symbols and integers, that's cool. But this is the logical part that might confuse you. So if the input number is greater than the integer, keep finding cases where it is and set some variable equal to what the symbol is. It'll never set it to anything that can't be you know, it can't be over the value because it won't make any sense. And then you just figure out, okay, what, what do I have left remaining? It's just the input number times the range flag. And then you call the function all over again. It repeats the same logic. So, and the range flag is essentially giving you that first Roman numeral letter. So, you know, let's just make sure it works for a bigger number. Uh, what would one 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 be? I figure if it works for that, it probably works for anything. Uh, M C, so that's eleven hundred X I M C X I. Great, and you know why not test it out for the stupid case of of one one. Okay, yeah, so. That's that's kind of a, a reasonable solution. Hopefully not that hard to grok. You could have probably made it a little bit tidier. But um, hopefully that idea of iterating over the keys and values which retain order, setting that range flag equal to the symbol, because range flag is what you're using to recursively build up the Roman numeral string, and then figuring out what you need left and recalling the function on what you need left actually makes a little bit of sense and again not all python dictionaries are going to be ordered so if you're on 2.7 there's a chance it'll work but it may not so